Good afternoon, America, and welcome once again to Jerry's Garage Talk. That's right, you lucky viewers. You got me. I am Jerry Booth, and I'm the host of Jerry's Garage Talk. Sit alongside me this week. All right, what do you want me to call you this week? Let's go with Nitro Brett. All right, we got, right. we got Nitro in the house with us this week on Jerry's Garage Talk. And the only place you can see us is right here at GoFlow.com. Hey, we've had a lot of fun shooting some of these shows. We've been out at Volo Auto Museum, and last week we were at C. PV. Wasn't that right, CPV? I thought so. And uh, this week we're going to do something a little bit different. Spring is in the air. I can kind of feel it. My tulips are starting to come up, and I love when that happens. But I want to talk lawnmower maintenance. That's right. You know what? If you haven't got your mower or your blade sharpened, we got an expert in the house, and he's going to tell you how to do it and how to maintain your lawnmower. So don't fast forward. Don't pause. Nothing. Just keep right on going. Don't touch those knobs or anything. We'll be right back. You're watching Jerry's Garage Talk on GoFlow.com. Jerry Booth here from Jerry's Garage Talk. We're going to do something a little different this week. We're going to get you ready for spring, and we're going to be introducing my good friend, Pete Zappa. This guy knows everything about lawnmowers. He's been in business over 30 years, and he's going to teach us a few things. Lawnmowers have changed. They're not like Grandpa's lawnmowers anymore. So stay tuned to Jerry's Garage Talk. The only place you can see this is GoFloat.com. That's right. I was talking about spring. And we want to talk about lawnmowers today. We want to get them ready for the spring. And I tell you what, I couldn't think of anybody else to ask except the regional expert, Pete from Pete's Repair. Pete, thanks for coming in this afternoon. Hi, Jerry. I'm doing good, Brett. Pete. That's Pete. Nitro, Brett. Doing? You guys know each other? Yes, we do. Okay, now that we got that established. All right, what do we got here? I know it's a lawnmower, but what is this model right we here? We have a Toro Push lawnmower. It's not self-propelled or anything like that. It is a mulcher, and you can put a bag on it. All right, now, um, what would something like this machine go for? It's $249, okay. assembled, plus tax. All right, talk me through some of these things here. Now, I actually bought a Toro from you, what, three, four years ago? Yes. Mine's self-propelled. Now, yes. this one is not. Right. All right, um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, the difference between the self-propelled and, and a push is that you have to manually move this machine. With yours, all you do is there's a bar under yours, or I think you've got the personal pace. I do. And you, you just walk and the machine matches your walking speed. That's exactly what mine is. I tell you what, I've had great luck with it. However, I do got to get over to your shop to do, do some maintenance. Now, I kind of like to do some of the things myself. I know you're kind of a do-it-yourself kind of guy. Yes, definitely. All right. First things first. Let's, let's talk about some of the features on here. Now, okay. this is not two-cycle. No, this is a four-cycle engine. All right. Two cycles have been outlawed. Really? Yes. There are no two-cycle engines unless they can meet the CARB standards for California for 2011. Whoa, I didn't know that. Now, is that with snowblowers too? Anything. Really? Yes. There are very few companies that can make a two-cycle engine today that conforms to those carb standards. All right, now we're talking carbs here. Is this carbureted or fuel it's injected? It's carbureted. All right. Um, fuel injected is a much larger engine. All right. Does this run pretty good on the ethanol? I, mean, I know all the gasolines now have a 15%, some of them have 15% ethanol in them. 10% is all they will warranty. Okay. So if you go to the 15%, which they're coming out with now, right. uh, you have to be aware of what you're doing. You're going to lose power and the engine is going to heat up. All right, see, and I think that's what's happening to me right now. I'm getting uh, gas at some of these other different uh, filling stations, and it seems like my gas is not lasting as long. Is it because of the 15%? It's because of the alcohol in the gas. All right. Your performance drops way off also. Is there something you can add to that? No. To there is no better. additive you can put in there. The only thing you can do is buy some straight gas from some place out in Mars because there's no place in this country you can buy straight gas anymore. Mars, that's where Nikki is this week, you couldn't be <laughs> in. So. Um, all right, what are some of the things we should do before we get ready for the cutting season? Okay, number one, you want to make sure that your oil is changed before you start the mower. All right, does this have a drain cock or a drain it plug? It does not have a drain plug underneath. The way you drain all the new lawnmowers today is you drain them from where you fill them. All right. And this one is right over here on the right hand side, standing behind the machine. All right. It has a dipstick also. That's what we call him, too. That works. <laughs> it does for me. And if you'll notice the dipstick, can you guys zoom in on this? The dipstick has some hash marks on it. And what the hash marks are for is to tell you when it's full 
at the top of the hash marks or when you need to add someplace in between that and the bottom. You do not, and I'll tell you this before we finish again, you do not screw this into the hole to check the oil level. You just put it in there and let it sit. Is that with all mowers? Only with the Chinese engines and okay. Japanese engines. Okay. They are the only ones, the Honda, Kawasaki, um, Ching Seng, and a few of the God others. I forget the names, yeah. Right. But you should you can consult your owner's manual, which would tell well, you Well, there's do a that. decal right on the machine right here that shows you. How to do it. How okay. to do it. And it shows that it's not screwed in and it's where you add the oil. So you just take it out and you check it that way. And when it shows full, then you screw it back in. But if you want to drain the oil, you, drain, you pull that out of the machine. And all you do is you turn the machine over on its side like so. Have it raised up above your pan that you're going to catch it in. And just turn it, you don't have to turn it all the way over on the side because it's angled and it will drain out fully. Best thing to do is to wait until it's a nice warm day and the machine is warm so the oil is thin and it will run out completely. Where's the oil filter in this? There is no oil filter in this. Okay. The only kind of a filter that there is is there's a screen inside the motor by the slinger. And the slinger is what lubricates the inside of the engine. It just kind of splashes around in there and knocks gotcha. oil everywhere. Okay. Um, you were telling me about checking the oil on this is just by sitting a, a dipstick in it. How about like a Briggs and Stratton motor? Briggs and Stratton, you have to screw it in. Okay. Like everything has a dipstick today. All right. And all you need to do is make sure that the dipstick is reading full. Okay. And like I say, the Orientals do not put a full mark on there. They just use these hash marks. How, how, what's the capacity on this? 20 ounces of oil. Okay. What are those little bottles? Straight 30 coming? weight, 20 Straight ounces. Straight 30. It is okay. How often should we change it? You should change oil minimum once a year, okay. but check it every time you use it. Okay. Just like anything else, today it's full, tomorrow it's not. Does it uh, does it catch like uh, get a lot of impurities and everything in there? I mean, air cooled engines are probably the dirtiest running engines in the world. Okay. Because there is no oil filter on it, after four or five mowings, the oil will be black. It's still serviceable with the oil that's in it, but it will be black because of all the carbons that it picks up out of the engine. And because the engine runs at almost breakneck, temp breakneck temperatures. What does that mean? Extremely hot. Okay. It's so it's running terms, at I guess. 275 to 300 degrees it's running at. All right. Do you recommend probably at the end of the cutting season or in the uh, beginning? At the beginning of, of the cutting season. All right. So we should be doing this right now. Yes. All right. Now also this has an air filter. Let's put yeah. this bad boy around a little okay. bit. I hope that's not too loud. Okay, so here's the air filter on this. How do you, how do you replace the that? Air filter, now this one here is just two spring-loaded tabs on the top here, and this door pops open. Yeah. Okay, Sometimes they do. Easier, easier said than done. There we go. And oh, okay. it has a paper element in it. Almost everybody is using a paper element air filter today because they're so much better than the oil-filled foam air filters. Although the oil-filled foam collects more dirt, but most people don't know how to service them. I don't. How would you uh, on some of the older mowers? The oil-filled foam, you take it in the kitchen, put it in your sink, yeah, wash it with soap and water, that. and then you put it up and let it dry. Okay. Then you take a tablespoon of oil, put it in the filter, and you squeeze it around until it's throughout the filter, and then you put it back in. That's the way you service really? an oil-filled foam air filter. These, you just toss them? Do you try to blow That's them out or no, anything? don't or blow them out. It's just like a car air filter. You okay. blow it out and you, you rupture the fabric. Okay. So you just take it. If you can tap it, get the light dust out of it, that's fine. Right. If it's real heavy, dirty, heavy duty dirt and you see the color of it, you can match that up to a new one. Because okay. you should have a new one on hand anyhow. Right. Just match it up to the color. If it looks bad enough, go ahead and change it. Do you keep these in stock? Yes. Okay. So that's what your air filter is and your carburetor is of course right behind it. Today all engines are not primer start. Oh, this, you, don't, you don't pump it? There's no primers on them. Not a thing. Pull the cord, two poles, it'll start. When did you? When did they start doing those? Now I bought my other. This one is all EPA stuff that's coming. Oh, okay. However, now I've got my Toro, where I don't pump it either. I just hold it for like ten seconds. That's right. And it seems to work. Right. That's a different. That's a purge prime carburetor. Okay. This is just a, a auto choke carburetor. So this has got an automatic choke on it. Oh. Wow. When the engine starts, the temperature of the engine actually opens the choke. Is it kind of like the old chokes uh, on the cars where they're so. like with a heated spring? Yeah, with a okay. little coil. All right. Same, same thing, very similar. It's an overhead valve engine also because they run cooler than the flathead engines did. And you produce more horsepower out of the same size cubic inches. 
so wow. you've got a, a better engine. Th these things have changed just in the last few years and everything. I mean, how much training do you personally go through to keep up on this Every stuff? year I have to go to a one-day school just to ke keep up with all the changes. All right, are you a master tech? I'm a master service tech. I have been for the last 10 years. And how long have you been doing this? 27 years. Oh my goodness.